There is something truly remarkable and humbling when you share the ocean with a whale. Their size demands respect, their intelligence easily apparent, their movement effortlessly full of grace and power. They are the true rulers of the sea. The story of the great whales is its connectivity to nature, and it's similar to mankind. Nature is within us. It is a part of us. We're all made from nature, and we are all dependent on its health. The ancestors of modern whales lived on land. Fossil records tell us that 50 million years ago, near present-day Pakistan, they began to spend more of their time in the ocean and eventually became fully aquatic, living, feeding, and giving birth in the water. They've undergone a number of adaptations needed to fare well in their watery home. Their bodies have become streamlined for efficient movement through the water. Their forelimbs have been modified into pectoral fins, which aid them in steering, and their tail has become broadened horizontally, consisting of two large flukes which propel them powerfully. By far the most entertaining of all the great whales, the humpbacks express their joy of living. With breaching, fluking, and slapping behaviors, the majestic humpback whales demonstrate their ease and comfort in their new home. You put yourself in the perfect position, yet all you see is blue and a level of particulate that looks like snow. Then it happens. First just a dark shadow, then what appears to be a submarine heading right for you. Her mouth is open, exposing her teeth, but all she wants to do is hear what's in front of her. She is the great sperm whale, and the two of you are about to meet on her turf, in her ocean, on her terms. A dream fulfilled. Off the coast of South Africa, from May to August, the annual sardine run brings large predators to feast. The largest are the brutus whales. Like a submarine with an open jaw, these 12 to 15 meter giants charge through the bait balls at speeds in excess of 12 knots. Mostly, the charges are skyward through shoals of fish consuming hundreds of sardines in a single mouthful. There are many magical things about the ocean, but none quite so majestic as the whale. Perhaps it is because of the slow ease with which she moves through her world. Perhaps it is the gentleness of her stare when she rolls on her side to look up at you. One simply knows the universe in that moment. For me, it felt like unconditional love. Be long, no, I.
Japan, Norway, and Iceland are still killing great whales today. Japan hunts the highest amount of whales, killing over a thousand per year. Founded in 1946, the International Whaling Commission was established to enact laws regulating global whaling activities. Even though a moratorium on whaling was set in 1982, the IWC allows a certain number of whales to be killed per year for aboriginal subsistence and scientific research. This scene imagines a mother bowhead whale harpooned by Japanese whalers as she painfully watches her baby being captured and pull aboard a whaling ship. There is no humane way to kill a whale. Killed mainly by harpoon, some with tips that explode, they suffer a slow, agonizing death. Other hazards to great whales include collisions with shipping traffic and military sonar testing. The great whales are a line in the sand for all endangered species on our earth. Brought back from the brink of extinction after centuries of mass slaughter, man must now focus on the conservation of these magnificent animals. And that is exactly what humans are beginning to do. Man's new environmental renaissance is sparking real concerns in how we treat our environment along with the great whales. We are beginning to learn that we need a healthy earth for mankind to also be healthy. We are at the apex of educating our fellow brothers and sisters to our need to a healthy planet. And that is why us members of the Ocean Artist Society use our art to educate. People like our founder, renowned marine life artist Wyland, who changed the way people think about the environment when he started painting life-size whales on the sides of buildings in the 1980s. Wyland always thought big, and he never stopped. A whale has really been, for me, you know, my inspiration for my art from the beginning. I remember watching uh, Jacques Cousteau and, and seeing the Cousteau divers swimming alongside a great whale like a humpback and you could really get an appreciation of how large and beautiful these animals are by seeing a person next to a, a great whale. And that really inspired me to paint a hundred ocean murals featuring the great whales. And the idea was that if people could see themselves uh, alongside a great whale, whether in the ocean or even on the side of a building depicted in art, uh, it would really make them appreciate how awesome and amazing and, and uh, giant these, these animals are.